A hero who was promised to a princess ended up being accidentally reincarnated as a demon due to a bug in the system, but was given the opportunity to be reincarnated again if he died, so he would do anything in the demon realm to be erased and become human again. The story begins with this young woman, who was precisely the princess of the human kingdom, asking the great hero to defeat the last demon and thereby unify the continent, and if he did this, they could finally get married. The protagonist, on the other hand, just told her not to worry, because he would lead everyone to victory, and his name is Sha Feng Liao, humanity's strongest golden hero. Speaking of the strongest demon, we soon spotted him, and his name was Wimiebala, a level 555 demon king. Compared to the protagonist in terms of size, we could already see that the demon was no small feat. It didn't take long and young Sha Feng immediately began his string of attacks against the demon king, and that day marked his 18th year in the army, where he led the most powerful squad to attack the highest level demon. The age-old struggle between demons and humans would end with him, and his sequence of blows continued one after the other, until he had apparently finished off the supreme demon. However, there was still a problem, and a warning from the danger system began to appear in front of the protagonist, and the demon said that even in death, he would take the boy with him, and realizing the trouble he had gotten himself into, the young boy began to see his life flash before his eyes in that instant. It doesn't take a genius to guess that he ended up being deleted after that, and he only had two minutes before his soul completely left his body. He even received a warning from the system congratulating him on leading humanity to victory, apart from all the other contributions he managed to make while he was still alive. Thanks to this, the reward he had won would be to have the option of reincarnating again or not. However, he had nothing to lose and immediately accepted the opportunity to be reincarnated. The young protagonist ended up waking up to someone saying that the army was coming, but the boy was too excited to realize that he had actually managed to be reincarnated. What he hadn't counted on was that he would be surrounded by demons, which made him wonder why this had happened. One of them commented that the Blue Guild was approaching, and if they didn't escape, it would be too late for everyone there. The boy ended up confused, asking if the old man was talking to him, until he spotted a mirror and decided to check his appearance. As soon as he saw himself in the mirror, the shock was enormous, as he ended up being reincarnated as a demon, which was definitely not supposed to happen. Disgusted with everything and everyone, he asked the system to appear, because it had told the boy that he would be reborn, but no one had mentioned that it would be as a demon. What's more, he was the former light of humanity, and his childhood sweetheart, who was the one who appeared at the beginning of the morning, was waiting for him to return home, and asked what the system had turned him into. Speaking of the system, it then appeared saying that a small error had occurred during its rebirth, and although the protagonist had asked it to fix the error, unfortunately the system was unable to do so. The boy didn't want to know anything, and even wanted to complain to the system's superior about what had happened, and the system said that it had fixed a new chance for him to be reborn and make up for this small mistake. The only thing he needed was to try to be deleted from history, so that he would be able to reincarnate as a human this time, but self-deletion from history didn't count in this condition, so someone had to delete the boy. After that, the boy was simply lost, and the system disappeared not to return for a long time, and now he had to find a way to be deleted from history again. The people there referred to that body the protagonist was in as gone, but they called it Xiao Gone, which is kind of the same as Little Gone. And apparently he was always like that, and panicked when anything happened, and when the human army attacked, someone with no brains like him was always eliminated. A demon who was standing nearby eventually detected 12 members of the Blue Guild approaching, and apart from her highness who had strength equivalent to B+, none of them would be any match for the humans. They had to find a way to escape quickly via the escape route, and if they were caught those cruel Blue Guild members would never let them escape alive. When he realized that this was the perfect chance he had been looking for to try to be erased from history, precisely because he was now a demon too, he could simply go and face them and thus be reincarnated again. We immediately spotted the boy leaving his companions behind, and they asked if the boy had lost the rest of his neurons. In response, he commented that hiding would never solve the problem, and if he could hold the humans off by himself, they might be able to escape. Of course, this left his companions confused, wondering if it was really the same guy they had met before. A strange thing suddenly started to happen, and he spotted a kind of giant magic circle just above him, or close to him, in fact, and the passage in front of them was completely blocked. Suddenly, someone appeared next, and it was the daughter of the sovereign demon, 
called Lu Bingyi, and she commented that they had grown up together, and at a critical moment like that, no one should be left behind. The protagonist ended up being disgusted with the princess, as he couldn't wait to be reincarnated again, and setting out with all his might, he launched a coup in an attempt to topple those stones so that he could sacrifice himself. He ended up calling the beautiful lady a meddlesome woman, while in his thoughts he was saying that his hand was hurting a lot. Clearly, this kind of comment made young Lu relatively upset, and one of her followers who was already old, asked who the boy thought he was to have called the princess that. The boy then told the old man not to underestimate the determination of a man who was willing to sacrifice himself, and this left the beautiful lady with her heart racing at that moment, wondering how she hadn't realized this before, since the young man had a very manly aura. He went on to say that all this time he had been hiding and hiding, and asked what was so scary about humans. Like a brave demon, he just asked them to let the boy be deleted from history with dignity. This thrilled the queen even more, and she was still very reluctant to let the boy go alone to confront the humans so that they would flee, and finally he had managed to get out of that cave. As soon as he met the humans, he was basically asking them to try to delete him from history, and it wasn't long before we saw all of them heading in the boy's direction. He was happy that he would finally be able to reincarnate again and go into the arms of his princess, but what he didn't expect was that the rescue would end up going for him, and the old man from before had evolved from rank C to rank B. It seems that the boy's attitude is what made them evolve, the demons, after the death of the demon king. According to the old man, because they had no resistance, were constantly harassed by humans who invaded the demon lands. They kept burning, erasing the demons, and in doing so plundering everything they saw, treating the lives of the demons as if they were just grass. By continually compromising the demons, they almost truly came to believe that they were in fact weak. In other words, this time the boy was really right, and the next person to appear was the queen, or princess, I don't know, saying that on that day, the demons would resist. The humans, on seeing the beautiful lady, ended up being quite frightened by this, and the protagonist, on seeing both his companions more closely, began to wonder if this was really possible, and if they actually believed what he had said before. Meanwhile, the princess, who was now even more beautiful than before, said that it was just as the boy had said, and they were indispensable without each other. On the human side, they were completely flummoxed, since they had been told that the demons there would have a maximum of one B-ranked demon, and now suddenly an A-ranked one had appeared, which was a huge leap from what they were actually prepared for. With that, the beautiful princess prepared her magic to finish off the humans who were terrorizing the demons, casting her powerful magic in their direction shortly afterwards, thus annihilating the humans completely, leaving no dust to tell the tale. Meanwhile, the protagonist was becoming more and more incredulous, and not only had he not been deleted from the story, but he had evolved even further, making it harder for him to be deleted now, which made him even more depressed after what had happened. In the capital city, in the kingdom of Yum, we saw the Hor residence, and this demon, called Mado Chow, was asking if the drawbridge plan had really failed completely. According to this young man, it was exactly that, and the plan was originally for them to have calculated the time precisely, expecting his highness to be completely surrounded by the blue guild, at which point they would become completely desperate in the midst of this situation. With that, the young master called Huo Wujum would lead the demon soldiers to rescue his highness, let him finish off the enemies in front of her, showing his manly side, etc. And finally he would advance between the bodies, making her fall in love with him. That was the effect of the drawbridge they were talking about, and she would definitely end up falling in love with him if everything went as expected. However, who would have thought that she would suddenly be in high spirits and directly defeat the Blue Guild? It is said that this still managed to awaken the Queen's dormant powers, and the demon from before asked his general what they were going to do now. This was Hua An, one of the three great demons and he commanded the military forces, and he just said that all the military power was literally in his hands. With their status as the three great commanders, they would directly force the queen to the court to marry her son, and no one would dare object. Immediately, he told them to summon his son back that night, because the next day, they would lead the troops to the court and propose marriage to the queen. He always said that that drawbridge effect plan was completely useless, after all. Meanwhile, we spotted the queen, and she was thinking to herself that she didn't expect the young Gon, who in this case is the protagonist, to be so brave at a critical moment like the one they were facing. This showed us that the drawbridge effect worked completely on her, 
But the only thing that changed was that she fell in love with the protagonist, and not with the son of the three great army commanders from before. Referring to her handmaiden Lamer, the queen asked her to bring the young Gon to her afterwards, as she was going to give the young man a reward. At that very moment, the Lamer servant ended up thinking about what kind of reward the queen could give a young man like him. And let's just say that I don't need to say anything. The gift itself would be the queen. Excited by the situation, she said she would take him there immediately, but the queen was a little confused as to why she was so excited about a reward. Meanwhile, on the protagonist's side, the system was reminding him that he had 120 status points available for him to distribute, but he had apparently already taken them all. He certainly wouldn't distribute those points, since that would make him even stronger and it would be harder for him to be deleted from history. As his rank was precisely D, it was supposed to be easy to delete him from the story, but as that place was a long way from where the humans were, he wondered about a different way of being deleted from the story. The next person to appear was the queen's young servant, saying that her highness was calling for him. Noticing her next to him, he began to push her, and she asked what he would like, and if he had by any chance drunk them all, and that was exactly it. He then said that only she could help him with this, and she was supposed to try to erase him from the story, and apparently that got this young servant excited, thinking that he was apparently more aggressive when he was drunk, despite being very quiet when he was in his normal state. She then used a giant hammer to erase him from history, and although she wanted the boy, it wasn't the right day, since it was the queen who was requesting his presence. In the presence of the queen herself, she said that, because of the heroic performance he had given in the previous fight, she would especially guarantee him the first-class bravery medal. From now on, he could enter and leave the palace freely, and as an additional reward, he won something that went by the name of the King Killer Set. What did that mean? I don't know. But it seems that, according to the Queen, it would help him to be a true hero. The young woman was relatively surprised that the Queen was wearing that special outfit in order to reward the young man in front of her, because, even in the past, she had been very reluctant to wear it, but now she was quite at ease wearing it. Also in this scene, we discover that the Assassin King defined was actually the former Demon Lord's clothes, and that this would only make the boy even more powerful if he actually wore it, so it was completely useless to him. If there was nothing else the Queen could offer, then he was withdrawing from her presence, which made her even more excited to be able to win him over, since he had changed so much. Outside, the boy noticed that a man was looking directly at him. Meanwhile, in the thoughts of this demon, called Wei Ming, who was also one of the three great demons, he said that a pawn like the boy was hardly worthy of the clothes he had won from the queen, even more so just for having been brave in battle. Such a high level of reward should be presented in front of all the demonic ministers to show the world, and doing so in secret was definitely an attitude unworthy of a king. Instead he, for example, had devoted his entire life to Yun's kingdom and never even earned a single reward, and even forced him to stand next to General Hua in the next day, who was the one who wanted to marry his son to the queen. Referring to the old man in front of him, he was disgusted, thinking that the protagonist was only there to show off his reward in front of him. But things turned out completely the opposite of what the old demon had thought, because the protagonist said that the outfit was just for him. Of course, this ended up leaving the crown shocked, and the young man just thought that, since he wanted to be deleted from history, it would definitely be completely useless to him, so he'd better find an excuse to give it to someone. The boy then commented that his highness, thinking of the service the old man had rendered to the kingdom for so many years, had specially instructed him to give the old man those clothes, and he should treasure them. It wasn't long before we saw the protagonist running out of there, leaving the old man completely lost and unable to believe what had just happened. He ended up letting his deepest thoughts escape, saying that he was a complete fake as her follower, and didn't deserve such a reward, even more so a sinner like him. However, from now on, he would definitely serve the kingdom until the day he died. Returning to the boy, it seems that being deleted from history there really was more difficult than he thought, because the demons were relatively close-knit, and the next day he would try to find another place where he could be deleted, until he overheard some people talking about something that was of interest to him, and this young man was referring to the son of that general from before. Basically, the great general had decided to act the next day, and he would directly lead the light of demon soldiers, thus representing the three great demon commanders, only to propose to the queen that she marry the young man. Anyone who dared to stand up for themselves would end up being permanently erased from history, 
And when the boy heard just those words about being mercilessly erased from history, it was definitely the perfect opportunity he had been looking for. So he was going to stay in that miserable place for another day. In the conference hall, we saw the queen and the three great commanders gathered. And even the protagonist didn't expect the demon's morning meeting to be so boring, and he couldn't wait for them to get straight to the point. This one, whose name I can't remember, said that the queen had mourned the loss of the demon king for three years and had now finally returned to the great hall for real, and that this was indeed a cause for celebration. The human army, which was a few hundred miles away, was very agitated, and thanks to the great general's protection, they didn't lose a single city. The great general was truly a remarkable figure, and since his grandparents' generation he had been in charge of the entire demon army, protecting Yun's kingdom, and he definitely deserved to be rewarded. As she had put it, he did have something he wanted her to give him, and it wasn't long before we saw him asking his son to come closer. His request was for the queen to grant his son a wedding, not least because they had practically grown up together, and she commented that it had been three years since they had seen each other, and asked if there was anyone his son liked by chance. However, the great general decided to change his request and asked the queen to marry his son. This left her relatively surprised, and she asked him not to say such strange things, because he and she didn't even have anything to get married out of the blue. The great general then commented that whether she liked him or not didn't matter. That's because in the face of the greater good, everything had to be put aside. For thousands of years, no woman had rightly been in the position of demon king thus holding the power of the demon clans of the court. Now, rumors were spreading and people were losing faith in the kingdom of Yun, and once she ascended the throne completely, there was sure to be a certain uproar. But if she married her son, it would certainly silence those who were against her being in power. The followers were supporting this cause as it really made sense, but others didn't like the great general's proposal, as they didn't want to see their queen pressured in this way. This left the queen relatively silent for a while, not knowing what to say, and the protagonist finally found the perfect moment to act. Taking the lead this time, he grabbed the queen's arm and pulled her close, telling her not to let that old man talk to her like that. This was because everyone had the right to pursue their own happiness. And as the queen was already in love with the protagonist, this made her even more excited about the boy. Referring to the great general, the protagonist asked who had given him the right to act as a leader like that, meaning that he was even trying to be a greater leader than the queen. Elder Wei Ming, who had received the protagonist's clothes, recognized who the boy was, and finally the queen was about to apologize to the general, saying that she would have to refuse his offer of marriage. But before she could do that, he commented that he had worked and devoted his whole life to Yun's kingdom. Responding, the great general said that, so far he had become the only one in the Yun kingdom to personally receive a magical order from two successive demon kings, and to be rewarded in front of all the ministers as a great general. Apparently, power has gone to the head of this disposable scum, and he has begun to threaten the queen herself so that she will think very carefully before responding to his offer. Some of them, sensing the imminent threat, prepared themselves for combat, and he then said that limiting power was entirely at his command. In other words, if anyone touched it, a catastrophe would definitely happen, and the queen asked everyone there to stop it, and she would agree to the general's offer. The protagonist, being bold in his attempt to be deleted from the story, said that the queen was too foolish, since she was giving up so quickly, and asked if not a spark of her father's spirit still remained with her. He even asked her why she was so frightened by that insect, but with a huge look of debauchery on his face. The same insect as before then asked him when he had the right to speak, and to provoke him even more, the protagonist spat in his face, which completely disgusted him, since no one had ever done that before. The boy, who couldn't wait to be erased from history, then said, patting the great general on the face, that he had served in three dynasties, and the insect should think again about who had given military power to the scum. What's more, he even spoke out in defense of the queen, making this beautiful lady's heart melt even more for the protagonist, and he said that she was the demon king now, and she was above everything and everyone, with an unparalleled beauty. He then asked who his son was so that he could be at the queen's side. For the manure from before, no one there was more worthy than her son to be by her side, so he asked who else was capable of it, and the protagonist immediately volunteered. And frankly speaking, according to the prota, a few days ago in the cave, 
they had already committed themselves to each other. It was clear that he was doing all this just so that he could be deleted from history and reincarnated as a human again. The queen's follower couldn't believe he had the audacity to humiliate the great general like that in front of everyone, while the young lady who followed the queen was completely happy that they were already in a relationship. In this case, he and the queen. Some people then commented that when the queen was surrounded by the blue guida, it was said that that boy stood up for her, while others had never seen him before. Meanwhile, in the queen's thoughts, she said that for her, the boy had gone very far, while the great general couldn't wait to be able to erase the boy from history. The protagonist provoked him even more, urging the demonic general to end his life at that very moment. And because the boy had committed a capital crime, he would definitely be unable to get out of there alive. The general then launched his most powerful blow to finish off the boy, hitting the protagonist immediately afterwards, causing him to be thrown away. The old man from before still tried to save him, and the protagonist was happy that he was finally going to meet his human princess, finally being the husband of a beautiful lady by his side, but in the midst of that huge explosion that followed the impact of the blow on the protagonist, something was definitely not right. It was the general's son who first noticed this, and the boy's silhouette gradually began to appear in the midst of the fire, and even the general's son wondered how this was possible. Basically, a special skill called military order was activated, which even blocked a fatal blow. What's more, he was able to evolve thanks to the attack from before by 40 levels, and gained a few more passive skills too. The people there commented that the queen had given him the magical military order to protect him, and this was the military order that a demon king could only give someone once in their life, showing that the boy was really very important to the queen. A demon blessed with this military magical order represented a symbol of the demon king's total trust, thus gaining the demon king's accumulated experience and unique protection, which I think was activated only once. This would give the boy an important position, thus commanding military power in the future. The beautiful lady then commented that her grandfather and father had once granted the great general the magical military order. From then on, he had led the three armies and the soldiers of the Yun kingdom in several life and death battles. Now, she had given the magical military order to the young Gan, who in this case is the protagonist, and from now on he would be the great general, and with the left general, they would lead the entire army of the kingdom. Clearly this didn't make the former great general happy, as the beautiful lady ended up reducing his military control with a young boy, and he wanted to see who would dare to recognize the boy as a great general. The first to recognize the young man was precisely the old man from before who had won the robes, and the second was the old man who was with him in the cave too, who had evolved to be rank. In addition, several others ended up accepting the boy as their great general from now on, but this was definitely not what the protagonist really wanted, and he felt as bad as if he had eaten something that didn't go down well. The magical military order itself was proof of his highness's trust in him, but the manure from before wondered how someone who had never led troops into battle could convince a group of experienced demons. Even though his military power had been reduced, Dung had then given the idea of letting the boy pass through the demonic ancestral cave, and the ancestor Lu Yun was the only king of their clan. Only those who were recognized by the ancestors truly deserved to have the power of a king, and if he managed to pass through the demonic ancestral cave, he would personally give up his tiger talisman of military power. This made those closest to the queen angry, because no one had made it out of that place alive in a few hundred years, and they then asked what the intention of the rest of the washing was. Besides, the boy had just been promoted to major general, and in any case, they obeyed the demon king, wondering if, by any chance, he would dare to disobey an order again. It was the queen who spoke out, saying that this was really out of the question, and that the cave was considered forbidden, and entering it would certainly mean certain death. In the protagonist's mind, the only thing he could see was the perfect opportunity he was looking for. Meanwhile, the cattle dung was just calling them all a bunch of cowards. However, the boy said that the words the general was saying made sense, and he was totally in favor of this idea, and even asked where this ancestral cave was, and he would definitely go there. Everyone there was completely surprised by the boy's response, since no one there was stupid enough to risk their life for nothing. 200 years ago, the demon tribe faced the greatest crisis of all time, and the ancestral demon king of the Lu clan sacrificed himself to protect his people. He sealed his last demonic energy in the cave, waiting for the 
the one who would be able to be recognized as king to arrive. However, for more than 100 years, no demon has been able to pass the test. Another old man then commented that entering the demon cave required at least a two-person team, and apart from General Gon, he asked who else would dare to enter that place. In fact, it was very dangerous, and no one there was willing to risk their necks in order to accompany him, and in this case, the scum from before said that the protagonist should just get on with it. If he couldn't find someone to enter the cave with him, then he would surely be unable to lead a troop of thousands of demons. However, at the last minute, someone actually spoke up, but what the former great general didn't expect was that it would be his son, called Ho Wujuan, and I'm sure I'll soon forget his name. The former great general couldn't believe his eyes, asking who had allowed him to act on his own, and the son asked if his father thought he was inferior to the boy. Another commented that definitely not, since he was the future of the Yun kingdom, asking how he could take such a risk, and he said that only those who were recognized by the ancestors really deserved the king's power. If the Yun kingdom really deserved a king, it had to be him, and this earned him even more admiration from the soldiers who were there. With that, he immediately shut his father's mouth, and in a different place this time, the other said that the young master's attitude was the right one, and the protagonist was cheating in some way, since he didn't really have any strength. Apart from him, who has been excellent since childhood, they couldn't let the boy steal the limelight, and he might find an opportunity during this mission to the demon cave to be able to erase the boy from history. And apparently, this guy was relatively confident, and according to him, he knew what to do. On the protagonist's side, the young woman who served the princess said that the young man who had offered to go with him was unreliable, and he would just wait for the perfect opportunity to erase the young prota from history. Of course, this only made him even more motivated to go on this mission, and before he left, the gentleman who had won the clothes told him that he had bought the best status-boosting potion and the best healing potion in the Yun Kingdom for him. He then commented that the demon cave was extremely dangerous, so he needed to be very careful. For the boy, the old man was just exaggerating, and soon we have a cut to the ancient demon cave, and we see several demons gathered around a kind of altar, along with the girl who served the queen. Speaking of the boy, he handed the potions he had won to the young demon, and the young woman from before asked if they were ready to enter the cave. It was clear that the princess hoped that nothing bad would happen to her beloved, and at the moment, no one there knew it yet, but the demon king who would influence the whole world was literally about to be born. Immediately after they were ready, the young lady who served the queen activated the magic circle that would send them into the cave. If you liked it and want to keep following this story, don't forget to leave your like so that you can support my work. It's always an honor and a privilege for me to have you with me so far. I wish you and your family all the best. A big hug and see you next time.